when the when nuclear powered submarines were first developed and the USS Nautilus reports were underway on nuclear power. At that point, USS Nautilus needed to be refueled every 13 years, and crews could submerge for 60 days at a time and operate deep submerged. But before that time, our submarines had to surface every 24 hours to light off their diesel generators in order to charge their batteries so they could operate on battery power for the next 24 hours. And it was during that surface time when periscopes and antennas were sticking up out of the water that we could communicate with submarines. But when they went deep, there was no way to communicate, and they were rather useless to the Navy, not being able to communicate. On my tour at the Naval Air Development Center, and I really was with the Naval Air Station Johnsville supporting, and my, my job was as a flight support coordinator for the Naval Air Development Center. And the Chief of Naval Operations came to the Naval Air Development Center with the Navy's number one priority project to develop a communication system to communicate with deep submerged submarine. And part of his words of wisdom were, just, this is the Navy's number one priority project, take charge and move out. Uh, and at least at, at that time, I had arrived at the, at the Naval Air Development Center, having just come from the Airborne Early Warning Wing Pacific, and we were flying the Super Radar Constellation. We, we knew there was a Super Radar Connie down at the Naval Air Test Center, Patuxent River. And not a good photograph, but our super radar constellation oh, was kind of a, I can't, I can't say it was a beautiful bird. The, 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 the Super Connie, without the radar antennas, really was. It was a graceful and aerodynamic, beautiful. But anyhow, the Super Radar Connie. We, we knew there was one on the back line at, at NAS Patuxent River that had horrible fuel leaks and would probably never have flown again. But with the Navy's number one priority project, funding was not a problem. Had the airplane pulled off the back line, had the fuel leaks repaired, arranged to have the airplane transferred to the to Naval Air Station Johnsville in support of the Naval Air Development Center. Brought the Super Radar Connie up to the Naval Air Development Center, took everything out of the back end, all the electronics, AEW, ECM equipments, and had a humongous workspace. The Naval Air Development Center was also in the business of developing airborne targets. And they had, we had 30,000 foot tow cables. One of those, and we had a, a huge winch installed in the back of our Super Radar Connie, attached a hose pipe on the belly, and we had a, we had a five mile antenna came as a bit of an education because we didn't need a five mile horizontal antenna. We needed an antenna with 1,000 feet of verticality. It was fun to go down to and work with Navy Chickatique, the radar and telemetry gear up down in, in uh, out of Norfolk, Virginia, and again at Navy Chickatique, and, and work at establishing the angle of bank and the speed needed to get that five mile antenna coiling elliptically downwards to give us a thousand feet of verticality. Kind of a fun game and we, we dunked that antenna in the water several times till we pinned down the angle of bank and the speed needed. But that was, uh, again, uh, a, a fun to do. Cheeky cheek, let us be, hey whoops, and then we, well, we knew it was in the water and it had to come out. And that was easy. We reduced the angle of bank, and here it came. And, and again, it was just again a kind of a little trial and error system of establishing the bank, the speed needed to give us 1,000 feet of verticality. Uh, I recall one flight, especially to Bermuda and back, and that was early in the game, and we were trailing that five-mile antenna. And we we had arranged for a traveling airspace from 15,000 feet and down to and including 5,000 feet. It just happened that thank goodness we we had arranged for this properly, because an admiral 
the commander of Second Fleet had, who had planned an operation for that day also. <laughs> and because we were the Navy's number one priority project, we did our thing, and the good Admiral and Second Fleet had to, had to stand by. Another thing of interest coming back was we had, we had occasion to, to fly through a, a cold front on the way back into the Naval Air Development Center. And that five mile antenna just acted like a lightning rod. And we were really concerned and th thank goodness we had a guillotine system in, in our winch antenna system. And energized the guillotine and there's a five mile antenna out there on the, on the bottom of the Atlantic today. We were real pleased to have come up with a good workable system. And, uh, and at that point, the, 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 I think the name Tacomo had evolved, although in our flight schedule, it was always just Navy's number one project. But anyhow, we had a good working system. It was transferred down to the Naval Air Test Center, Pax River. They did not have crews qualified in the Super Radar Connie, so they didn't want our Super Radar Constellation. The communications gear, the antenna equipment, went to Pax River, got installed in a C-130. We were delighted that it, the test and evaluation was very positive. Two Tacoma squadrons were established, East Coast, West Coast, well, better yet, out of Barbers Point, Guam, and then Barbers Point, Rota, Spain, then Pax River, and now back at Tinker Air Force Base with the Strategic Communications Wing. So we're, we're delighted that the system is alive and well and doing its job. Thank you.